What are some of the key components to a scud or microfauna tank? Well, you can see right here, we've got some live plants, leaf litter. Of course, you see scuds flying around. There's plenty of other life in here than scuds. Well, cherry shrimp. There's quite a few cherry shrimp in here. We've got a few varieties of snails, uh, ram's horn, mini ram's horn, bladder snails, of course. You see copepods, seed shrimp, lots of different worms. Here's an old seed pod. Now this is a sweet gum seed pod. This one's been in here quite a while, but there's still, you know, it's still being eaten. It's still being lived in. Baby scuds love it. We've got some chunky gravel. I love using larger stones and really coarse gravel to create lots of habitat or surface area for scuds and other benthic creatures to thrive. We've got a big part of a whelk seashell. You know, the bottom of this tank's kind of like a rubble layer. And that rubble is perfect habitat. Oh, there's an isopod. And of course, more scuds. I think the dominant creature in this tank would be scuds as far as quantity, at least visible creatures. I won't back up. This tank wouldn't be, um, I don't know, I get it. In some people's eyes, it's not attractive. But uh, that's not who I'm talking to. Now you see the hornwort, hornwort is really growing. You see lots of new growth. When you get to the end, there's quite a bit of layers that have been dying out. You see the little hornwort uh, needles, we'll call them. Now that has kind of all that decaying needles that has kind of made the tank a little cloudy. It's a lot of excess nutrients, which creates an out bacteria bloom you probably can't see that on the camera too well i do have a heater in here um, this used to be a beta tank so it was heated uh, the beta is long gone and as soon as the beta disappeared all the life showed right back up because it was there it was just hiding and out of sight Now, I don't feed this tank at all. It has had some food over the last year, but uh, not very much at all. I'll put a little green bean in there every once in a while, maybe some snello, but it doesn't get like a regular feeding of any kind. There's so much decaying in there. It's like, I, d I don't want to add more nutrients. The seed pods, as they're breaking down, they're not, you know, they're not going to create bacteria blooms or anything like that. They're not real hot. Um, but you get like a big mass amount of plants uh, breaking down or let's say you have a lot of duckweed or salvinia and it's going through a decay cycle where you've got some die off. That can create a big bacteria bloom because you've got lots of real, you know, real hot, heavy nutrients going into the water. And those are not technical terms. So we've got lots of big chunky rocks. We've got seed pods, leaf litter, some hornwort, uh, the creatures themselves. Um, this originally was not a dirted tank, but I do love dirted tanks. It's got some sand. It's not super deep. It could be a little bit deeper, of course. And um, another huge factor is time. So you know, I've introduced lots of uh, creatures and a lot of the like cultures off my website into this tank. And uh, there was a beta in here and that beta really, I mean, it, it just worked on the population. It, it ate tons of shrimp, it ate tons of the uh, isopods and scuds, uh, which was great. That's why they were in there. Now he's uh, moved on. And, you know, again, everything kind of came right back. Now he's been gone uh, probably a few months. And some of these creatures are really starting to get going. And, you know, they were already in here for a long time. So it's not like their populations were nothing. Or, you know, it's not like they were super small. 
but they're really starting to keep going. They have tons of food, tons of decaying material, and uh, they're going to flourish. They're going to reproduce. Now, again, I'm not adding lots of food to this all the time. So this would be like a naturalistic aquarium. I love the kind of rubble layer. This has always been um, way back when I was heavy in the salt water. I would make rubble tanks that look just like this only it was all crushed coral big chunky crushed coral and you're bringing in all this live rock with all kinds of crazy creatures on it let's find us something to look at so this is a little rubble tank and uh maybe it's meant more for growing scuds and microfauna to feed uh feed your main aquarium but a lot of people end up keeping these you know, just to watch. And they find that they're more interested watching all these little critters fly around uh, than even maybe their fish tank. Not everyone. But there's lots of scuds hanging out everywhere in the uh, hornwort. I'm not sure if you see them. Uh, but, you know, they're there. Uh, but again, maybe this isn't a show tank in your living, uh, living room, although this is kind of in my living room. And uh, to me, this is this is just my style. This is what I like. Uh, it's kind of what I have time for as well. But even if I had more time, I'm just not overly concerned with manipulating a bunch and setting it up and, uh, you know, manicuring it. There's nothing wrong with that. I love them that way. I love uh, to see... The beautiful tanks people create, but this is what I create. It's it's not complicated. Um, it's not organized. Uh, but you can find this out in nature quite often. I mean, you can go and find areas where there's just lots of rubble and debris. And within that rubble and debris is just huge amounts of habitat, which life flourishes in. If this was bare bottom or very minimal amount of habitat, just kind of sand with a few leaves or sand with some little gravel, it it just wouldn't support very large populations of creatures. The small creatures I'm talking about. It would support something and probably more than you'd think, but you know, with this diverse or complicated um, or co complex habitat, it really lends to providing safe haven for small creatures. Um, you know, there was a betta in this tank a few months ago, and you would, I mean, you would see them because of how dense the habitat was. Um, you would see scuds up against the glass underneath the leaf litter and stuff, but, you know, that betta really had them held down, and he would, um, you know, they're awesome hunters. They would, he would root around in the leaves and, you know, you'd see him, you know, roost as, you know, a scud would go flying out, then he'd chase him down and get him. And that was so much fun to watch. But he's been gone for two months and they just, boom, this tank's exploding. That's, I, I see that happen all the time. Um, and I'll even use fish to kind of reset tanks. So if I've got a scud or microfauna tank and, you know, you'll see their populations rise and fall and um, it never hurts to kind of clean it up a little bit with putting a couple fish in there that are hungry and, you know, they'll kind of wipe out the population a little bit and then you take the fish out and then that population rebounds pretty strongly, especially with the increased um, waste created by the fish from eating all the scuds. Uh, that's a, a good food source for those micro creatures. And it kind of... Um, it, it kind of refreshes everything in a way. So that's what happened here. The fish was in here quite a while. Um, the tank was really, it was a shrimp and scud tank before I put the fish in. It does have a little air stone. I added that as the um, big portions of the hornwort died off. Um, it created a layer, there was no water movement. So there was about an inch layer of just cloudy bacteria almost which then you'd see some larger little, um, some kind of paramecium swimming through it, eating the bacteria, uh, which was fine and great, except then all of a sudden I found a um, handful of baby dead shrimp. So I don't know if they were down in that layer and it was low oxygen, 
but I did notice um, in the substrate several little baby dead shrimp. So I put the air stone in there, that's turning that water, uh, burning off some of that, or it's exchanging some of the gas at the surface uh, a little easier, which just helps everything out. So I'm kind of all over the place with this video, but I just wanted to show you this aquarium. It's gone through a lot of stages. Uh, originally it started out uh, years and years ago as a little goldfish tank uh, from like a goldfish that showed up at a f after a fair. <laughs> This is my style. It's just kind of a rubble jungle tank, nothing crazy. And the biggest factor here for all the life in it, if this is something you like and you want to replicate something like this, set up a 10 gallon tank, you see the rubble, but the, it takes time to get here. It takes a lot of time actually. And you might not want to hear that. And I don't know if this is the best tank to show off or not, because I would say some people probably look at this and go, Ooh, like what, what are you doing? So if you like this kind of a tank, they're easy to put together, but they take time to develop. And if you want to see hundreds or thousands of little creatures crawling around everywhere, you either have to spend a lot of money and buy it all at once and buy lots and lots and lots of scuds and cultures, which is fine too. But if you give it some time and patience and don't overfeed it, overfeeding just kills the environment, crashes it. There's already so much nutrients in here. Adding food to this would just foul the water and you would kill everything off. There's already food in there. How can there be so many babies and so much reproduction if there wasn't a bunch of food in there? I mean, what are they doing down there? They're eating stuff. They're eating all that decaying hornwort. Uh, what happened to that seed pod? Where did it go? They're eating it. Leaf litter. What's that shrimp doing? He's eating it. You know, there's a lot going on in here. And uh, you don't need to feed it a ton. Go to philipsfishworks.com. You can buy things like seed pods already in water with scuds with them and other micro creatures growing on them. They're called scud balls. You can get a bag of bugs, which comes with leaf litter and some hornwort. You can get our newest culture, leafy bugs, which comes with, hey, there's a cottonwood leaf. It comes with a variety of leaves. Bag of bugs and bag of leaves come with live oak leaves. Leafy bugs comes with a variety of leaves a couple seed pods and that same mix of creatures that come in everything else, scuds and seed shrimp, copepods, all kinds of little tiny micro things you can't see. So I don't know, is, is this the, is this a great advertisement? Well, I've come to find out some people really like this. Some people uh, really enjoy these rubble tanks. I had a customer who came and picked up a culture uh, at our um, shop and I mean, he was down on the ground looking at the scuzzy tanks and I, I always kind of, I don't know, I tend to apologize for it for some reason. I'm like, oh yeah, was, you know, I'm, I'm busy and I don't have time to deal with it. But in his mind, he's seeing what I'm seeing. So uh, it's no apology necessary. So hope everyone is doing well. Go to philipsfishworks.com. I've got microfauna and scud cultures on there.